Knock High. Hello and welcome to Knock Knock High. We are the Glockenfleckens. I am Dr. Glockenflecken. I am Lady Glockenflecken. And we are talking to Dr. Danielle Jones today. That's right. She came in high demand. I don't know why. I was like, I was having trouble getting words out there for a second. Mm-hmm. We are talking yeah, you got a about, little, little uh, robotic. Sometimes I, I struggle with getting words out. Mm. I feel like it's easier for you. I don't know. Yeah. I Is that like, like a maybe my... passive aggressive? No. I, <laughs> well, it, it, it depends on how you interpret that. But um, I think maybe. I'm you're, perhaps you're... more eloquent and loquacious and verbose. What, what's the, uh, yeah, the, the, the verbal part of your brain i feel like it runs faster for you than it does for me vernicke's area you'll have to be more specific hey that's pretty good i'm impressed i still that you remember know that. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you took neuro, neuroscience i have a degree an advanced degree <laughs> that's true that's true in social neuroscience uh, yeah close enough social <laughs> cognitive neuroscience is the full thing but so, yeah. Uh, yeah you're you're a smarty pants that's basically what it comes down to mm. so I uh, never, for a long time, I did not have an ob- an OBGYN character in my skits. That's true. And I heard about it a lot from people. You did. People Just were were outspoken. So many comments about that glaring omission. When's this gonna happen? You know, you got everybody else except for that. And by the way, plastic surgery. Those are like the two that I didn't have for a long time. You have. There's a lot you don't have, to be fair to you. True. It's not just those. You I am only like... one person playing all right. these characters. So it, it's, it is a little challenging, but it, they were absolutely right. The people that would tell me that I was like, yeah, this is like one of the you know bigger specialties in medicine. Like, I, it's got to be something there. Right. But, you know, I, I was scared. Yeah. I, I wasn't sure how to approach it. I wasn't sure, you You're know. very intimidated. Because I, you know, a big part of what I do is trying to... Uh, portray these specialties in a way that is funny, that allows us to all laugh at these specialties, but not to undermine like who they are or make fun of patients or, you know, I I don't want to ridicule people's like the purpose for them being at the type of doctor they are. Right. We laugh with people, not at them. Exactly. Exactly. So, and I just, I found it very hard to come up with content because this is an area that I have no real significant experience with. It's true. So um, that's when I asked you if you would like to play the character. Yeah. Is that how you remember that? Oh no! Or, oh, I, I, well, I did. I I did ask you, but you 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 suggested it, right? Uh, yeah, I said if if uh, you're intimidated by it, you know, I could do it if you want because of the two of us, I have more experience. Right. And I was I like, think. yes, please, yeah. let's do that. Yeah, yeah. And we but had... even now, it's a, it's a little tricky for you. I I feel like you're well, you're the, a little intimidated. Writing. Well, the writing is just a little harder because, and that's really true for any specialty I'm writing a skit for because I have to do much more research because I'm an ophthalmologist mm-hmm. and I but just don't have any. Right. You did do an OB rotation though in med school. I did, and I loved it. You did like it. It was really it was my first for like a hot second. You thought about doing that, and then you did went into the next rotation, and that thought. Yeah, that was kind of one of those forever. things. I just you know when you have like a really fun group of people you're doing a rotation yeah. with, it just like oh damn, this is really cool. But then right. you know you get further away from it, and you get a little different perspective. My on grandfather different things. was. That's right. An obstetrician. That's right. He delivered me and all of my siblings. And all of my cousins. And also he, so he delivered my mother. It's my dad's dad, but they lived in a little small town. So he happened to have delivered He delivered my the mom, whole town. Pretty much. Yeah. He kind of did. Yeah. But then, you know, when he's delivering, this is where I always fell off the wagon on this story. He delivered me and my siblings, mm-hmm. but that meant that he was my mom's obstetrician right and i will just leave the implications of all of that (laughs) to everyone's imagination for me that would be a little weird i guess it worked for them just fine so it would be the equivalent of my dad yeah (laughs) right that'd be weird (laughs) your father-in-law is delivering your children no thanks i don't think i can i can see that either but he's also an engineer that would be we'd be in dire straits if it were for an engineer dad (laughs) 
Yeah. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right. Too unpredictable. I don't like where this is going. <laughs> let's um let's let's get on to the show. Uh, so again, we have Dr. Danielle Jones, um, and she is known online as Mama Dr. Jones. She's got a huge social media following, big on YouTube. She was doing YouTube in the in the medical space before a lot of people, and as a fantastic comment, uh, comment, fantastic content. Uh, and so we had a great time talking with her. So let's bring in Dr. Jones. <laughs> All right, welcome, Danielle Jones, Mama Dr. Jones. It's so great to finally get a chance to talk with you. I, I see you all over YouTube, and so it's great to have you here. Well, thank you for having me. I am excited to chat with you guys. I was watching some episodes of your podcast last night, and you're doing an excellent job. Oh, thanks. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> and we were just, uh, before we started uh, recording, we were just chatting and uh, noting your background, uh, which if you've seen, I'm sure you probably, whenever you post your YouTube videos, it's probably the same background, I'm guessing. You have that yes, up there? Yes, this is specifically yeah, so, designed for YouTube, not my yes. living room. <laughs> well, I, I want to tell people who are listening, uh, there's this awesome like, neon baby with headphones in the back. Uh, and, and now our background looks so much more ridiculous whenever we see how <laughs> professional and amazing yours is, because we have... Uh, put a fake plant. No, right that's a real between. plant. Oh, that's a real yeah, plant. Yeah, I have oh. kept that alive. Oh, it just, credit. Okay, it just kind of looks fake. That's, that's, uh, <laughs> the point is, uh, we we could learn a thing or two from you and and your setup. <laughs> well, actually, we were talking about you know you said you should name the plant. I'm looking at it now, and there's two little light reflections above it look like eyes and <laughs> oh. the little eyebrows at the top. I mean, you've really got a good thing going. It's a here. whole character. Yeah, Lean into I, it. I, I, I yeah. like I like how this is going already. Just uh, bringing everything back to eyeballs. This is this is how you do well on this podcast. Um, so you're joining. It's it's early in the morning. You are in New Zealand. Yes, right? I live uh, in Aotearoa, New Zealand, for the past year and a half, and it's about seven thirty in the morning here. And I'm just hoping my kids get off to school without barging in here in the middle of this filming. <laughs> and and tell me, because you were you know how long? I guess you've been practicing in the states for your whole career until a year and a half ago. Is that right? Yeah. So I got out of uh, training in 2017 and I did about three years of private practice in, well, hospital-based practice in Texas. And then we we were intending to take kind of a sabbatical and travel around the world for a year. So in December of 2019, we both quit our jobs effective for June, 2020. We sold our house. We gave away everything we owned. We bought one-way tickets. And then it was March 2020, and we oh, were no. homeless and jobless and had no idea oh, what to do. Gosh. So we were kind of nomadic around the U.S. for about a year and a half. I did locum work, and then we finally made our way over here. <laughs> That's, wow. And, and what 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 about New Zealand in particular? Well, have you ever been here? I, I've, I've not. I would love to go. But it, honestly, just thinking about the time difference between where we are and where you are, it started to make our brains hurt a little bit. <laughs> yeah, and it, so, makes, uh, it breaks my brain too. <laughs> it was really hard to figure out. Uh, so it, it's, it seems like this whole different world out there, that whole area of the, of, of the world we've never been to. So yeah, yeah tell it's us just about beautiful. It. We visited once and the pace of life is lovely. The um, work-life balance, honestly, for obstetrics and gynecology is unlike anything you could find in the U.S. And the people are really nice and it's just beautiful and so many outdoor things to do. So we feel lucky that we've been welcomed here temporarily and we're just enjoying our time here. I'm really interested in, in this work-life balance piece. So uh, obviously comparing you know life as a physician in, in the States versus where you are now. Uh, so tell us a little bit more about this work-life balance. So we get actual health care that we don't have to pay for, which is unheard of, honestly. When was I mean, the have last you ever heard time of you such said a thing? the words prior authorization? I don't even know what that means anymore. I mean, I feel like it's, it's back here somewhere it's gone, and I just filed gone. it away. <laughs> Actually, I, I showed your um, video on an American gets health care somewhere else to one of our friends here. <laughs> And she was like, why is this funny? Is that what really is? <laughs> um, it's like we yeah, have so to we, laugh or we'd cry. Exactly. So that's, that's, that's the way true. it goes. Um, genuinely, we all have, um, you know, six weeks of, of annual leave and everybody takes their vacation time. And it's not like weird. That's just what you do. Uh, people get parental leave, maternity leave. The, the 
the expectations for what you can do in a day are reasonable. It's just it's just a very different culture in a in a work sense. Did that play into your decision to leave? Uh, just the system we're working in here versus wanting something different, no, knowing that you know it's just a lot more stressful here and looking for something new. Yeah, I mean, honest. If I'm honest, we came here because we came and visited, and we just really loved this country, but. Mm -hmm. As we started getting more serious about it, it definitely was a huge factor that drew us in when I talked to some of the docs here because obstetrics and gynecology, I mean, all specialties, but especially ours, I think, with us still oftentimes coming in for our own patients to do their deliveries and things like that is just a field that's quite difficult to get any semblance of work-life balance in. Yeah, I imagine so. It's uh, And the other question I had about your move out there is how did you survive that with kids? Because that is a long flight. Yes. We're, we're actually we're doing it. We're going to Australia later this this year. And oh, you'll have to tell me when when you're yes. coming, and I'll talk. Yeah, let, is that close? Wait, no, I mean, New that. Zealand's right there. I imagine it's still <laughs> like close? several hours. You know, away. they're different countries. Right? I know they're different countries, <laughs> okay. but like, are they? Are do I just think they're close, or are they yeah, actually? It's I mean, it's okay. It's the closest thing to us, but but I would I guess it's <laughs> still a little bit far. <laughs> Um, and, and I'm terrified. Well, I'm terrified of the travel. Yeah, the the uh, plane have, ride as the we the have you know, two eight and eleven, uh, and so I mean they they do pretty well on flights, but this is like a whole different beast here. Yeah. I yeah. don't know. No, they'll do they'll do great. So when we <laughs> our kids have done a, quite a bit of international travel, but when we moved here, we had a two year old, a five year old, and two eight year olds. Oh, and. I don't we, have any room to complain then. No. Okay. Well, I, I mean, <laughs> it's, I think an international flight is really different. Like you get on and you cozy in and, you know, you're expecting to be there quite a while. You can watch movies. So our kids really like doing international flights because at home, if they're going to watch TV, they all have to agree on what they're going to watch. But on the flight, they have their own TV and they can watch what they want. So we right. were pretty like, you know, whatever screen time you want to do is fine. We try to kind of get on, watch a movie, eat dinner, and then have them sleep. And then by the time they wake up, usually things are, you know, getting closer to landing and, and it's fine. The hard part when we moved here is that they were still with closed borders. So we had to do Oof. what they called MIQ. We basically lived in a hotel room for two weeks Oof. and got COVID tests every three days. So that was definitely worse than the flight. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. That, that's 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 rough. At least we don't have to do that part. No, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Although I will and, and, say, somebody cooked all my meals and did my laundry, so I, I, I didn't hate it. <laughs> right, not all that's bad. Not, that's that could soften the blow a little bit. Yeah. And that so you're you're going to be there for how many years? Is it a set time frame before like your visa's up or you have to reapply to stay or how does that work? We initially were coming just for a year. They. Um, weren't giving residency visas when we moved here, but we are eligible for a residency visa. So I have a three-year visa. We've extended for one more year, which will be two. And then after that, I, I don't know. The kids love school here. We just really miss yeah. family. And also for doing things like this, you know, collaborating in person is uh, something I really value. But at the same time, I love working here. I love the culture of medicine here so it will mm -hmm. be hard to leave for sure well we'd love to have you come visit us and give us some tips on how to improve our plant background that's right so <laughs> that would build be us great. a little studio I here i can't speak to the plant because i i'm just glad i keep patients and children alive better than plants but i, I can help with the background <laughs> now you mentioned uh uh maternal leave which is uh obviously right in your wheelhouse that's that's something that you you know that you're that you're doing and um and so has that do you find that the patients are it's just easier you know going through pregnancy going through this process knowing that they have that support when they need it the um you know they they have the time to be able to you know be there with their family and recover yeah i mean honestly i think people here still even feel that they could be supported more than they are. So I hesitate a little bit to say they feel more supported because it's hard to compare like between two countries where the yeah. cultures and expectations are a bit different. But I certainly, when comparing to what we have in the U.S., think that the better maternal and neonatal outcomes are absolutely related to the fact that they have health care that is a given mm -hmm. and they have social support. So 
and social safety nets and leave and things like that. I when I got here, you know, back home, it would be weekly where I would have a patient come in who had no prenatal care and came in to have a delivery. I've seen maybe two patients in the year and a half that year and two months that I've been here that have not had any prenatal care at all because it just mm. doesn't happen. Right. And some of the things that you do, you know, I, we we asked you to, to to bring some stories for us, uh, some some you know from your career, from your own personal life, and uh, <laughs> this. I want you to tell us about this. First of all, this is a thing that I really didn't even I didn't know anything about this fetal transfusion procedure. <laughs> uh, so I read I, I read this this story from you, and so I want you to tell it. But uh, first, I want you to like tell us about that procedure you know, just what it is, because it's, it's fascinating. Yeah, it is. It's really fascinating. Luckily, with the advent of Rogam, so for people who are RH negative, like an A negative blood type, you can get a Rogam shot in your pregnancy, which decreases the chances of having immunization, get making antibodies that would destroy the fetal blood cells. And that has reduced the need for fetal transfusion really significantly. But every once in a while, someone comes along and for whatever reason, they have antibodies in their blood that cause the baby to get anemia while it's still inside. And after that's been diagnosed, then you can go on to have a procedure called a fetal blood cell transfusion. And this, I I don't do this now, to be fair. I, this was in my training, and this is done typically by uh, fetal medicine specialists. But you basically use a needle that's quite long, but very thin under ultrasound guidance, and you have to introduce it through the abdomen, through the uterus, into the amniotic sac, and get it into the umbilical uh, cord. Oh, my God. Very skilled, obviously. I was not doing that part. And also, your target is moving. So that's I'm very impressed every time I I see somebody do this procedure. Uh, But yeah, so imagine me. I'm just like very new resident, and my job is just to inject the very expensive, highly irradiated. So it's, you know, the cleanest blood that can be possible in this very concentrated tube that's going into a tiny needle and into an umbilical cord. So very high pressure while you're pushing it in. That's my only job. Okay. I'm in this room. Everybody said like, she's the, she's the dumb one. She doesn't know anything yet. Just let her push the blood in. Nobody can mess that up, It's like a syringe. You're pushing on a syringe. It's like a 60 ml syringe with very thick blood cells going through a tiny tube. So I'm like, yeah, I can do that. I, I can't do much, but I can definitely push blood through a syringe. I love so where this I'm, is going already. Okay. I'm already, you know, this poor mother is laying there terrified because this is not only a high intensity situation, it does not enjoyable to have a needle through your pregnant Doesn't abdomen. Sound like it. Oh, yeah. But you're also worried about your your baby, you know? Yeah. Sure. And I'm just here and injecting this blood. And whoever handed me the syringe, I, I will say that I didn't do it, but I, that's to be true or not. I don't know if only the people who were there will know that. And the lower lock wasn't all the way screwed on. So as I'm pushing it oh. into this high pressure, it just comes off and detaches all over me. I mean, oh, like, no. a screw, like a scene from a murder show. Oh, no. And I'm like, oh my so gosh, what do I do? In blood. Do I? Yeah, which is fine. I, but then I have, am I, do I reconnect it? What do I Were do? You like in, is this like in the OR? Is this like just all uh, geared up and patient or... room, but but geared up <laughs> okay. in in right. garb? Yeah. Yeah. It's so tough, huh? I I just reconnected it and kind of like nicely handed it off, and I was like, I'm gonna go take a shower. <laughs> and this poor mother, her eyes are huge, and she's you know nobody who's non medical sees blood like that very yeah. often, and you know she, I'm, I she's just don't. trying to not yeah. look at me. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, yeah, you was... don't need her fainting in the middle of all of that. I know. Wow. I, I felt so bad. Like, what do you what do you say? I mean, just that that's such a funny mental image of of this, you know, highly trained professional and and, you know, just from the patient's perspective, I'm sure it probably relieved the tension for her. I right? wish that I knew who she was so I could hear how she tells this story, because <laughs> I don't know if it was better or worse from her standpoint, but I was mortified. <laughs> <laughs> Did someone come in? You had one job. Yeah. What ended up happening? Did everything go okay? Did they, yeah, they do she, the... Yeah, in yeah. the grand scheme of how much blood it was, it was not a lot, but on your face and body, it looks like a ton. Uh, so I'm pretty sure it was probably like the medical student took over my job because I couldn't do it well enough or 
<laughs> oh my <laughs> goodness. <laughs> Where, where'd you do your training? Um, I did all of my medical school and residency in Texas in various places. So this was in Temple, Texas, just outside of Austin. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, we both grew up in Texas. So I was in the oh, Houston did area. You? And, Where yeah, at? I was in a, a Deer, Deer Park, Texas. Shout out Deer Park Deer. That was our that was our uh, our very creative mascot was the deer from Deer Park. I couldn't think of anything else that it would have been. Yeah, honestly. Right? What else yeah could it be? you just have to lean into that. <laughs> and, then, and then Kristen was in a small town called Dublin, Texas. Yeah, kind of in between very tiny Dallas and Waco, but way off. I so we know we know Texas quite well, and um, yeah, and so uh, uh, you know it's funny your your uh, story you know with the Lurlock and and having is that how you say Lurlock Lurlock. So he does, he These are words even I don't use much anymore, <laughs> but uh, it's actually stuff like that can happen in, in during cataract surgery as well. Because I've 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 known people, I've seen videos of, uh, you know, the the cap not being on tight on some kind of syringe, and then you push hard enough, and it just blows the tip off. Actually, that's what happened, <laughs> and that's a bad thing to happen whenever you have something inside an eyeball because uh, that's somewhat <laughs> delicate. Oh, you don't you don't do eyes. I, is, is, I, I, she's she's even more squeamish thing? than me. I, listen, <laughs> I know some people think what I do is not enjoyable, but eyeballs. I can. Not your thing. I don't. I don't even know if I actually did the eyeball part of anatomy because <laughs> I cannot. <laughs> <laughs> I keep saying, I keep telling people one of the, the biggest uh, questions to ask yourself if you're thinking about going into ophthalmology is, um, do you think eyeballs are gross? Yes. Because that, that will, <laughs> yes, that will weed out a lot of people because people have like an eye phobia kind of thing. And so it's the interesting, idea... right? I, what do you think leads to that? Is it because this is a very sensitive part of our body and it's just. I think so. I think that's it. Like, uh, you know, you know it's some protective reflex that just makes everybody yeah. not I mean, want to go anywhere near guts, eyeballs. No problem. I'm fine. Surgery, no problem. But I eyeballs. Mm -mm. That's no. that's that's where that's teeth for him. Yeah, I, I got teeth. the thing with like going to the dentist. I hate it. She yeah. she oh, literally she will fall asleep in the chair. Uh huh. At it's the like dentist. a little vacation. They okay, have these I... chairs and they have like heat and massage. And no, so like no. I'm there, I'm laying down. <laughs> no, I got sunglasses. Like it's dark because of the sunglasses. <laughs> it's, there's music on, heat. It's a day at the spa. Meanwhile, I'm holding on like for, for grim death. I'm just like. <laughs> just, just at the little cleaning. I can't. Step. Yeah, I, I need, like quite literally requires Xanax to go to the dentist. Oh, and no. <laughs> Well, listen, my, my husband is like your wife and they're. It's a different species. I, I genuinely think there's something that went wrong in my development, but there must be a reason we have an aversion to these people. They're they're out to get you for sure. Probably, <laughs> I I totally agree. <laughs> and you know, I talking about body fluids. I um, <laughs> that, there's a segue the, for seven thirty in the morning. <laughs> body fluids. I mean, like sputum. Like I could never Ew. do anesthesia. Like that's. That's uh, like the intubating that's just even and a gross word. suctioning. <laughs> yeah, the, you know, that's that's kind of gross. Um, but I, when I did my the most blood I ever saw in my life was during an emergency section. Yeah, and that that was it was I remember so much about that, and that was now like you know ten years ago that I did that rotation, and um, it it was incredible. Uh, uh, it, it, I don't even remember what it was for. Everything went great, but I was just like, I could not, I couldn't see. I don't know how you see anything you're doing whenever you're trying to like, it looks like they're just, they're just cutting and just going by feel the whole time. I <laughs> I don't know. I mean, do you, you, do you do a lot of like emergent C-sections? Is that maybe not a lot, but. Yeah. I, I mean, so here midwives do all of the like regular prenatal care and deliveries. So actually most of the time when I'm doing a C-section or anything, it's going to be where I got called in emergently. Something went wrong. Yeah. 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 And which I love about the system here. I, I really like having the midwives doing all the routine prenatal mm -hmm. care. I think that that is a superior system by magnitudes to what we have at home. You know, I, I often get frustrated at people on the internet when they say, oh, OBs are just surgeons and they pathologize birth and pregnancy and all this stuff. But it's actually, you know, there's some truth to that. And I really, really like the model of care that is afforded to patients here where they all have a midwife, even if they have a high risk pregnancy, they mm -hmm. still have a midwife who comes to their delivery. And it's just a very good system. It's hard on the midwives, but it's good. But yeah, I mean, C-sections have so much blood. I, I think it's 
really, really interesting that your body increases how much blood volume you have in anticipation for a delivery, that we can walk into a surgery and have a blood loss of three quarters of a liter and go, yeah, that was just a normal, successful surgery. Everything went fine. That is truly amazing <laughs> to me. Um, it really is. Yeah. Only second to how cool I still think it is, despite probably delivering thousands of babies at this point, that we're standing in a room and all of a sudden there's another human. I, I will never get over that being utterly <laughs> right. bizarre to me. Yeah, yeah, that is so cool. And you've seen it from both sides, like as the the physician and then also as a mom, you know, and it's I would I would think with your physician hat on, you know, it's a little bit more routine. And then but then when it's your own kids, yeah, I remember this from when we were having kids and it felt like this is this huge, bizarre, life-changing event, right? But then at the same time, women have been doing this for all of human history and other animals do it as well. And it could not be more commonplace. And, you know, it's just this weird juxtaposition, you know, it when is, you're... It is, yeah, I, it is. Yeah, I it's very fascinating because these are the biggest moments of people's lives and you yeah. do it with these people every day. So right. it is a very different experience than being on the other side from both just a standpoint of being on the other side, but also the emotional kind of side of it. But I do a lot of reacting on YouTube to a show called I Didn't Know I Was Pregnant. And every time like the baby's born, it's like heartwarming. You know, sometimes I'm teary because they've had a horrible experience, you know, and sometimes people will say, oh, do you cry at deliveries? And exactly what you said, Will, like, no, it's so different when you have your doctor hat on. Yeah. Of course right. not. Like, I've never cried in a delivery, you know, barring really horrible, sad scenarios. Yeah. Because you're, you're the one responsible for making sure everybody gets to be happy at the end of this. And yeah, it's game You don't time. Right. get to get in your feels right then. Right. Now, you, you actually, you have some interesting experiences, right, from your own <laughs> your own deliveries. I I do. I think everybody has interesting birth stories. I love listening to birth stories. Yeah, let's let's hear let's hear a couple of yours. Yeah, so I mean, I I have my one of my birth stories on YouTube, but essentially, my babies have come by C-section and this can be blamed on my oldest who is a twin and refused to put her head down. So, she will never get to live down the fact that it's her fault. <laughs> but, She's independent. She does what she wants. That's actually yeah. quite true. She goes with me to the hospital on call now. She's 10. She'll just sit there all day long, read a book, draw. But yeah, she made her decision early in life to be yeah. independent. And it wasn't the best one for me. But, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that's um, parenthood. <laughs> <laughs> but with my with my second delivery, I was a third year resident. And there's some hierarchy in medicine for better or worse, mostly worse, but I was being cared for mainly by people who were my co-residents or junior doctors underneath me. And I was trying to V-back and it was really, really important to me. I wanted like as little intervention as possible because I wanted to have a normal delivery. And I had a, one of them come in, my attending who was taking care of me came in and broke my water. And then one of the residents who was a year below me came in and she said, I just want to check you, see if everything's fine. And I said, Jackie, it's fine. Like, you don't need to check me. It's good. I'm good. That's too many checks. Just leave me alone. And she like kind of sheepishly went out and she's an excellent resident. Like, I don't know what's going on in my head. Like, you can't do your own health care. Come on. But yeah, right. for whatever reason, I decided this is the we don't time where I'm going to say no. Whenever we're, you know, yeah. So health. then she comes back, you know, with the attending and they're like, we have to check you. And I'm like, what's going on? You know, and they're like, well, baby's having dips. Anyway, it never crosses my stupid doctor mind that I might be having some kind of emergency situation. Right. And we went from that to I'm having a full on abruption. Baby's heart rate is in the 60s. So They're new. flipping me over with my naked butt in the air and sailing down the hallway in front of every person I work with 80 <laughs> oh, hours no. a week with my oh, naked no. butt in the air. And I'm panicking like, what's happening? Because I, I can't <laughs> even come to an idea of what might be the case, despite, <sighs> you know, extensive education on this topic. <laughs> Anyway, I, I just remember looking over the curtain as they got him out and my best friend from residency had tears rolling down her eyes. My attending who's also a good friend is like borderline tears and they got him out all's well that ends well. But yeah. my gosh, it was eight minutes from them taking me from the room after I had begrudgingly allowed the lower level residents check me eight minutes <laughs> until he was born. You know, some, oh some some physicians would choose not to 
have medical procedures and things happen at at their places of work for uh, these and, reasons for, for i this, think for this reason to avoid <laughs> a, a butt in the air exposed type of situation just a Small tuesday town, at Texas, work <laughs> not not very conducive to finding another hospital I, I imagine, that's right and plus yeah. i think you were, you were a resident or at that time or was that yeah that, i was a resident yeah you're a resident so it's, yeah it's probably hard you probably had to work the next day so yeah yeah actually right? they came to my postpartum room the next morning they're like all right guys we need you on the deck will someone else take care of the baby Oh, my oh wow. Not really. I, I got oh, five weeks off. Well, I think it says something about American healthcare oh, yeah, that yeah. we totally believed that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you never know. I feel I don't bad. Know. No, no. I mean, five <laughs> weeks felt like that, but no, it wasn't the next morning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there was um, a story a while back, though, about an OB who was delivering at her own hospital and was in labor and there was no other attendings in the hospital. And someone came in with an emergency and she went and delivered the baby while she was in labor. Oh my gosh. Wow. Ugh. I mean, good for her to have that presence of mind, but can't we like not make people have to do that? <laughs> I don't know. I you know, it's it's just that it's that the the I think the culture we're grown up with in in medicine where, you know, even if you're sick, you got to work. Even if you I mean, I had mm -hmm. when I was diagnosed with with testicular cancer, um, I, I left, I, I thought I had something, some kind of weird mass on my testicle. So I left clinic like at lunchtime to go get an ultrasound to find out if I had cancer with the plan to go back to work in the afternoon. And, and like, I even said to you, like, go, let's go home and like process this. Yeah, why, I why have, are you saying you're going back to work? What do you mean? No, you're not. How I, had, can you I work? had to have one of my, one of the fellows like actually take my pager from me and yeah. be like, you're not allowed to work. It's just, so it's just, I don't know. It's that mindset that I feel like hopefully is changing, uh, you know, but, but uh, it's as, slow. as we realize and I mean, it's, it's dangerous, right? I, I, I mean, yeah. that can't, you wouldn't tell your patients to do that. No, you exactly. guys are the worst patients. <laughs> we're, we're pretty. I yeah. mean, your story just now, same thing, like worst patients. I don't know what goes through your minds, but also the system, I think, creates that result, right? It like it makes does. you I the mean, worst patients. Yeah. I, I won't go off on a tangent about how residents should unionize and they are the underpaid slave labor of hospitals at this point yes. with how they are worked and undervalued and underpaid and not given sick leave and breaks and working insane hours that are completely inhumane. Right. I mean, the U.S. medical system relies on that and they will probably forever block large scale unions because of that. I just I mm -hmm. it's it shouldn't be that hospitals would cease to function if the residents went on strike. That's really an unacceptable model of care. Right. Right. Yeah. I don't. I don't imagine there are any trainees that are threatening to strike in New Zealand. Is that that's probably uh, not a. You know, they do go on strike occasionally. But the thing is, we can still function at a critical level, and they mm -hmm. strike and get changes made that give them a humane model of life. And don't get me wrong, our junior doctors work incredibly hard, and they are incredibly well trained. Um, but they have a union, and they stand up for themselves, and they get paid a working wage, and they get overtime if they work more than their rostered for and they can work locums and it's just a much better model for them yeah well let's let's take a quick break and then we'll come back with dr danielle jones hey Kristen, do you know why a stethoscope is so difficult to use because there's no heartbeat in an eyeball that's actually a really good point, but also the heart is quiet. The mm. sounds can be distant and you're in a noisy environment trying to listen to all the beeps and boops. Mm. Uh, but with Echo Health's 3M Littman Core Digital Stethoscope, it's easier than ever. You get 40 times sound amplification, active background noise cancellation. Even an ophthalmologist could hear the heart. Yeah, you know, I really could have used that before I had to do 10 minutes of CPR and you know, it leads to earlier detection, better outcomes, definitely something that's personally meaningful for us. We have a special offer for our U.S. listeners. Visit echohealth.com slash KKH and use code NOC50 to experience Echo's digital stethoscope technology. That's E-K-O health slash KKH and use NOC50 to get $50 off plus a free case plus free engraving with this exclusive offer, which ends April 30th. Um. 
All right, we are back with uh, Dr. Danielle Jones. Uh, so we haven't really talked a lot about your social media presence. Uh, and so first of all, congratulations on on all your success. Uh, you know, I've even when I first started, you know, doing my thing on on Twitter and really getting a sense of who's out there doing social media in the in the, in the medical space, you're like, you know, one of the one of the big ones. And so you've got an awesome YouTube presence. Um, and uh, so, yeah, congratulations on all on all of that. That's great. Well, and a pressing question. What? What does she think of your OBGYN character? Well, I don't. I, because. It, yeah, because it's every, you. I don't know. Well, besides uh, no, that. No, I've never seen such an excellent actor and portrayal. I, I don't know who you get to play <laughs> the OBGYN in your skits, but. Yeah. You should pay her more, and if you, she should unionize. If not, yeah. that's right. So here's the thing. No, but he, no. I, hold on, hold on, hold okay, on. All right. Because as I don't know if you've been noticing his face as we talk to you, and then certainly as you know from the behind the scenes of his <laughs> to skits. Be fair, I can't going. see it on my screen over here. So <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks very uncomfortable oh, uh, <laughs> occasionally, and he is. I think he may deny this, but I think. He's a little afraid of of going into the OBGYN world. Like he does not feel comfortable there. And I don't he had to have me come okay. on to play that character for that very reason. Like between the two of us, I have way more experience. It was, it was a glaring weak spot in my in my <laughs> in my repertoire of of medical specialties for a long time. I can't tell you how much feedback I got. Where's the where's obstetrics? Where's gynecology? And I'm like, man, that like, I'm he does scared. Not know. I don't he know. Not I, 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 how to like, do it? So, I have very little experience in that area, and so you it was seem very to be hard. suffering from the classic American medical student problem of my OB rotation was a bunch of stressed out, mean people. <laughs> um, and we're not mean yeah. for the record. It's just as I was saying. We're overworked and taken advantage yeah. of as residents. And it's high stakes situations. You and know? it's so. high intensity, high stakes situation. But but she did a great job with it. She, but yeah, you'll notice there have been, what, two skits with me? And okay. he's still a little bit squeamish about it. So if you have any tips for yeah. him, just I'm happy to provide, provide consulting, but it, it will come out of price. <laughs> as it should. <laughs> sure, sure will. Please, everybody listening, give me your ideas for for humor related to gynecology. It makes him squirm. It's one of the few things yes, about you know. his... Per, her, his little side hobby here that makes him I've squirm. Got, I've got things I'm more comfortable with and things I'm lef, less comfortable with. I could talk well, about scribes be, and ophthalmology all day. Yeah, <laughs> to be fair, you know, you walk a, a beautifully perfect line of content creation that I don't think many people in medicine and particularly physicians can walk, where you create very funny content that is never offensive, particularly to the patients who may be watching, which I think is honestly something that very few people have done well so you good job that. and i really appreciate what you do but it, it is a a more sensitive area where you do have to walk a little bit of a more sensitive line and you know oh, yeah. i've experienced that as well it it can be scary to talk about things in this field because just like we were talking about earlier this is such a um, important time of life for a lot of people particularly in regards to pregnancy and yeah it's it's hard. Yeah. And then add into that the, you know, lack of focus that a lot of American medical training has on women and AFAB people's health. Uh, it's, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, one thing that I, I, I know that you do in uh, some of your content is react to uh, medical TV shows and movies and things that happen, re you know, related to pregnancy, which I think is great. Like those are always really fun to watch. Um, so what I thought we could do for just a few minutes is do this game uh, called Real or Fake. So um, I'm going to uh, tell you about a patient scenario, okay? Something that happens, and I need you to tell me, okay, is this something that came from an actual TV show, or is this something that I just made up last night? Okay. okay. So it's really like fake or even more fake. Fake or, or more fake. That's right. Okay. All right. Great. So I, I can't wait. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to get 100%. Uh, maybe <laughs> there comes, there's the inner med student. <laughs> That's right. Okay. She can't just do it. She's got to get 100. Right. Here's the first one. Okay. The patient presents with hallucinations and rectal bleeding. Routine labs reveal she is pregnant. During an ultrasound, the fetus is found to be attached to the large intestine. 
during surgery to remove the ectopic pregnancy, the patient starts losing too much blood, so the surgical assistant squeezes platelets out of the spleen, which saves the patient's life. Did I make no. that up, or is that That's happening? fake. That's fake. That, is, that actually happened on an Stop. episode of House MD. <laughs> Yes. Okay, but did that it happen is... in real life? No, no, surely not. No, no, okay, but I okay. didn't make it up. <laughs> okay, all right. House is that... okay. Good. Yeah. Um, Have you reacted you... to some House MD? I think one or two. I think one of them was like a parthenogenesis episode. Do you know what that is? No. Where you're like, it's like, like asexual reproduction i think actually probably someone's going to oh. be in the comments like how can yeah, you not know what this us. is like you're explaining it wrong but uh, yeah it's you're, it, you're explaining it this happen. thing that happened on house md wrong yeah it's uh, a <laughs> yeah. I, I find that um the the, the more outrageous uh, medical situations happen on house i think that's what made it such a good show uh, i i actually i love i love house I would, can i let you in on a little fantastic. secret Yes. I haven't said this publicly anywhere. Ooh. I am working on a new project where we take really wild case reports and write fictional narratives around them. And we will be launching the podcast in a few months. And I'm really excited about it. It'll oh, be oh, that's similar so cool. to like true crime genre type <gasps> storytelling, but, but with can. real medical stories and fictional characters. That is really, really That's a cool. good idea. Yeah. So that is awesome. Well, now, before this goes live, I'm going to have to set up the YouTube page so people can go find that's it. Right. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Oh, that's, that's great. <laughs> that's such a good idea. All right, let's do the next one. Okay. A woman goes into labor, but unfortunately, the baby is in, quote, face presentation. So an emergent C-section has to be done, but just then an apocalyptic storm cuts off all power in the hospital. So now the C-section has to be done in the dark. And of course, it's done successfully. Grey's Anatomy. That is Grey's Anatomy. Oh. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Nicely done. I was raised on that show. I can remember if face presentation was the <laughs> the cause, but... <laughs> How often do you see face presentation? Is that what you call it? Yeah, um, it's, a, it's a rare presentation, but we see it occasionally. And they what can't deliver... Uh, so... You know, usually babies anterior, come out with their head right. first, right? Like uh -huh. you would put on a sweatshirt, kind of look down and put it over your head. Right. If you look up instead and your head goes through the hole of the shirt, that's face presentation. Oh, with the chin on the... Yeah. Uh, Seems problematic. Well, there's probably lots of problems. You, yeah. That. You can Google right. it. It's no, not thanks. the cutest way babies are born. <laughs> and they, they can't the come... <laughs> they can still come out uh, vaginally, but it depends on which way the chin is facing. Yeah. And still, it has a high rate of needing C-section, but it, their faces get super swollen. It's so sad. Mm. Okay, here's another one. The patient is 41 weeks pregnant. As the baby begins to emerge from the vaginal canal, the, obst the obstetrician realizes the baby is breech at that moment and proceeds to do an emergency section. The baby is then born with no umbilical cord. <laughs> Um, no, no, that one can't, surely nobody brought that as a story. That happened on Friends when Rachel gave birth on Friends. <laughs> what that... happened to the cord? <laughs> it was an oversight <laughs> from the production team, I'm sure. Wow. Not only does their obstetrician need more training in, in determining position, but that, that was the reaction I had. Missed. Yeah, that that's when you figure out breach position is is when the <laughs> baby's delivery. already halfway out. Okay, I, I have seen it once or twice, but <laughs> yeah, uh, not not on my not that's on rough. my own accord. Um, again, All only, right. only the people who were there can know if that was true or not. But <laughs> okay, all right. Um, here's the next one. The patient was unaware that they were pregnant until severe belly pain occurred, followed by a traumatic birth in which the baby with numerous deformities, burst through the abdominal wall and began attacking others in the near vicinity. Alien. That is yes, alien, that is. yes, <laughs> yes, you got, oh, I thought I'd trick you with that one. That is, that is alien. <laughs> I actually haven't seen that movie. I just know the like horrific, yeah. like picture people yeah. tag me in it. That would be <laughs> a traumatic birth right there. <laughs> Certainly, that, I think that would fall under the category of traumatic, yes. Mm -hmm. um, okay, all right, next one. The patient gives birth to a perfectly clean six-month-old baby whose eyes are wide open. 
every medical TV show ever. You got it. Every <laughs> medical TV show. That's exactly what I wrote down. It every is. medical TV show. You're doing great. <laughs> okay. Let's see. I think I have like two more. Notice I'm not like may come up with any of these. I know. I was going to say. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> 37 week pregnant woman boards a plane. She promptly goes into labor at 30,000 feet. Fortunately, an ophthalmologist is on the plane, but has to perform an emergency section using silverware found on the plane. <laughs> Unbeknownst to the passengers, a zombie apocalypse has also broken out on Earth, and a passenger in first class is infected. The doctor must perform surgery before the growing infectious horde descends upon them. Oh, boy. <laughs> The next skit you have planned, maybe? I made that up, yes. That <laughs> is good. That is me. I, I made all of that up. That's really Correct. It, right. it didn't it didn't hurt that the ophthalmologist was the savior in the story. I and, know, and yeah. I, threw that in. I, I kind of tipped my hand there. Okay. And then this is the last one that I, that I, that I found <laughs> in my research. <laughs> I'll go ahead and tell you this. is I did not make this one up, but I want you to see if you can guess what show it is. The patient's water breaks with no preceding symptoms whatsoever. She is shown later in the hospital in no apparent distress, asking when she will be in labor. The doctor then does an exam, finds out she is 10 centimeters dilated, and it's time to push. Mm. That's the birth every mother dreams of. Yeah. It's the perfect birth. Don't tell your friends about that, but... (laughs) Man, that's right. I feel like it had to be some sitcom or something. Yeah, well, close. The West Wing. That was uh, a birth on the West Wing. Okay. I don't know if you ever watched that show. I haven't. I don't know. No. no. Um, you know, I almost, you know, I almost included. What? Uh, let me see if Kristen can get this one. Okay. All right. This is a a time traveling nurse. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, gave birth. Uh. Mm-hmm. In which uh, the baby was removed from her without her knowledge because she was knocked unconscious with some kind of anesthetic gas. Okay. Um, and then she was seen riding a horse like a week later. Outlander. Yes, that was Outlander. <laughs> I wouldn't have gotten that one. <laughs> that's too easy. I know. Yeah, it's I, like, I it's like your you. favorite show. Oh, okay. That's okay. Good. Let's do it. All right. Post-apocalyptic world where it's going to be too easy because of this, but post-apocalyptic world. And for some reason, the decision has made to get pregnant, despite the fact that any noise will get you murdered by an evil monster. (laughs) And you must deliver the baby absolutely silent in a bathtub while fireworks go off to distract monsters. (laughs) I feel like, (laughs) is this, uh, um, are they Scientologists? Oh, In real life or in the show? In in the the show, in the show. Plot it's it's the quiet thing. So. No, I know. But don't Scientologists also have to give oh. birth silently? Like there was oh, really? that whole Tom Cruise, Katie Holmes Is thing, that a thing. Oh my God. Where that sounds really I need to look into this. because he, she was apparently forced, quote unquote, to give birth without making any noise. If we have any Scientologists oh. listening, can you let us know if we're correct? Or if in someone this? has like a People magazine from. <laughs> <laughs> That would also be a very ago. interesting <laughs> YouTube video. So I yes. am going to add that to my troll. Look for it. Silent births. There you go. Um, well, that was a nice job. Uh, you, you nailed some of those that I, I thought I'd I get know. you on. I know. She really knew those. <laughs> I'm chronically online. You know, this one, I built my YouTube channel by feeding the algorithm these things. <laughs> well, um, tell us before, uh, we're going to get uh, to a, a couple of listener stories here in a second, but tell us where uh, we can find you on social media. And what you got in the works. Sure. I'm Mom and Dr. Jones on all platforms. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm working on a new podcast that I'm very excited about, which will be very different from the content I'm doing now. And I hope that it turns out as great as I think it will. So if you are looking for that, you can probably find it under the description of my videos by the time that this goes up. Do you have a name for the podcast yet? We haven't even named it. it? Yeah, it'll (laughs) probably not launch until like May or June. But okay, gotcha. Well, that's exciting. Uh, yeah, you get, definitely got to look out for that. Yeah, that's that awesome. Out. All right. Well, let's uh, let's come right back and we'll listen to a couple of uh, or listen, listener say, stories. say a couple of listener stories. Uh, 
All right, let's take a look at some of our favorite medical stories that were sent in by all of you, the listeners. And we have uh, uh, Dr. Danielle Jones, Mama Dr. Jones here to listen to these as well. All right, so our first is an anonymous story. Uh, When I was about 27, 28 weeks pregnant, I dropped a heavy weight on my foot at the gym. Instant pain and swelling. I was pretty sure it was fractured, so I headed to the hospital, small town with no urgent care office, for an x-ray. I waddle and limp in the door with an obvious belly. Cue the entire ER team losing their minds. The receptionist tried multiple times to send me to L&D without listening about why I was there until I hoisted my mangled foot up onto the counter. (laughs) Then the triage nurse kept asking about contractions, and finally X-ray tech looked afraid to even come into into the room with the machine. Finally, the doctor comes in and confirms I have deep contusions, but no fractures. And we ended up chatting about other things. Luckily, I was able to laugh about the whole thing. (laughs) The ER staff are fearless unless you are pregnant. (laughs) Something about it. Same with you. We were just saying, like, something about your field really scares everyone else off. (laughs) Is that a thing? Do you think, uh, like... uh, uh, Absolutely. A hundred percent. Like, the number of times, and I I don't blame them because usually we have a policy in the hospital, over 20 weeks pregnant goes to labor and delivery, but the number of times the front desk people or even the, like, ED nurses or doctors have sent someone to labor and delivery because they had like a broken leg or Mm. something Mm -hmm. outrageously outside of my ability to care for i can't even count it's yeah or better to err on the side of caution i guess in that scenario yes and (laughs) you know calling i think just calling with questions about like things like oh can i give them you know tylenol or can they have you know an injection of morphine for their uh, kidney stone and things like that, which, you know, it's fine. I'd rather them call and ask than give right. something that shouldn't be given. But for the most part, yes, I do feel like sometimes people are afraid of a little uh, pregnant patients. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Our next story is also from uh, Anonymous. Uh, this is one of the funniest moments I've had with a patient so far. I'm a new dietitian, but this happened when I was a dietetic intern on rotations. I was speaking to a patient who had a cabbage done. Um, So like cardiac bypass surgery. Oh, okay. In the room, it was me, the patient, the patient's wife, and the nurse. I was asking about her diet history and did a typical day food recall. She mentioned eating some snacks throughout the day. So I asked, what kind of snacks do you have? She was pretty outgoing and interactive throughout our conversation, but she suddenly kind of shut down and got quiet. I thought maybe she just wasn't comfortable with sharing more of her diet history. And I was about to move on to another question when she goes, what kind of sex do I have? No. <laughs> I, I was so taken aback, but clarified. I can't. That's so funny. Oh my god, that's so. Am I good? Uh, uh, clarified what I had asked, and everyone in the room just burst out laughing. The nurse was laughing so hard she even had to leave the room. It was definitely one of the most memorable <laughs> I'm moments have to so leave far. The podcast. That's so funny. Oh my god, I can't. That's what hilarious. Kind of sex that, do I have? That's the funniest story. Oh, oh, that's Enunciation so good. is important. Yes, yes exactly. Oh. Oh. All right, so you can send us your stories. Knock knock high at human content dot com. Doctor Jones, thank you so much for joining us. This was a pleasure. So it really fun. is good. I can't Thank believe it took us this long me. to do this. And uh, so we're happy to have you. A lot of people will be very happy that we've gotten so many comments asking oh, for yeah. you to come on. So You're hopefully. You're a very popular request. <laughs> oh, for that's a guest. so nice. Thank you. So thanks again for taking the time all the way from New Zealand. Thanks for having have me. Have a good and tomorrow. A <laughs> yes, yes, I will enjoy this day that you will live in the future. Thank you. Yes. All right. You take care. <laughs> That was so fun talking with the Dr. Jones. That was fun. She uh, had some hilarious stories too. I really like her YouTube channel. Yeah. Uh, it's a great sense of humor. So knowledgeable and a as shooter. well. She tells it oh, like yeah. it is. Yeah, I yeah. love that. And uh, it just, you know, I'm, I'm a sucker for people that have a lot of educational content, but also can be funny with it right. and have a, you know, just a great presence. So yeah, uh, definitely, definitely go check that out. You should absolutely check out uh, Mama Dr. Jones on um, social media. Um, thank you for your stories. Uh, re- those are a couple of really good ones today. That was they good. Really They're were. all good, but those. Uh, fantastic. That really, well, that was funny. <laughs> uh, do you have any of your own stories to share? Do you have any thoughts about what we talked today? Do you uh, have game ideas? I'm always looking for like more 
uh, ideas for like little activities or games to play with our guests. So if you have some ideas for that, please let me know. Um, uh, my creativity can only get me so far, uh, and so I, I, I could. I use, know there's got to be some game I, fanatics out there. That oh yeah, could really... I could use I could use some help. Um, there's lots of ways to hit us up. All right, you can email us knock knock hi at human content dot com. Visit us on social media. Uh, we're on uh, TikTok, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. Instagram. Uh, you can hang out with us and the Human Content Podcast family on Instagram and TikTok at Human Content Pods. Uh, thanks to all the wonderful listeners leaving feedback for us and awesome reviews. That really helps. Thank you for leaving those reviews. If you subscribe and comment on your favorite podcasting app or on YouTube, we can give you a shout out like uh, the 585 on Apple who said, Will and Kristen are naturals. Their banter with their guests and each other is entertaining and fascinating. I feel like they could be my new best friends. Aww. Hi, let's, best friend. Let's be best friends. Yeah. Absolutely. It's hard to make friends it's when you're over hard. 30. It is. I, just, how do, I don't know how Will people do it. Will you be our it. friend, please? I, we, we are. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, full episodes of this podcast are on YouTube up every week on my channel at D Glock and Flecken. We also have a Patreon. Lots of cool perks, bonus episodes where we react to medical shows and movies. Uh, hang out with other members of this Knock Knock High community. We're active in it. We, we did, a live did a stream. live Q&A. Yeah, uh, it, it was, was so fun. It was awesome. And uh, you get early free episode or early ad free episode access um uh, like we mentioned q a live stream events lots That's of great. more coming patreon.com slash glock and flecken or go to glock and uh, speaking of patreon community perks new member shout out Woo-hoo! martha s caitlin t mary h also of course all the jonathan's a virtual head nod to you all patrick lucia c sharon s omar edward k abby h Stephen g rosk box Jonathan F, Marion W, Mr. Granddaddy, Caitlin C, Brianna L, Dr. J, Mary H. Patreon Roulette. This is when we randomly shout out an emergency medicine doctor on the Patreon. Uh, someone who's not in a the, literal, not a literal emergency, emergency. medicine doctor. Maybe they are emergency doctor. They could be, I don't know. but it's not a requirement. Someone in the emergency medicine doctor category of our Patreon. So let's do the drum roll. Shout out to April S. for being a patron. Thank you for listening. We are your hosts, Will and Kristen Flannery, also known as the Glock and Fluckins. Special thanks to our wonderful guest, Dr. Danielle Jones. Our executive producers, Will Flannery, Kristen Flannery, Aaron Corney, Rob Goldman, and Shanti Brooke. Our editor and engineer is Jason Portizo. Our music is by Omer V. To learn about our Knock Knock Highs, program disclaimer, and ethics policies, submission verification, and licensing terms, and HIPAA release terms, <laughs> you can go to glockandfluckin.com or reach out to us at knock knock high at human-content.com with any questions concerns what concerns could people have i don't know i don't know they'll tell us about them if yeah, they do i know. have no doubt certainly any concern or any any medical jokes any anything any, i noticed that anything. you refuse to say puns it says puns on I your on your sheet here but fan. he won't say it send the puns I'll say it. send the puns to Kristen. okay i i'm not a but it has to be a good one guy. i don't like lame puns but i do like a good pun all right let's wrap it up now knock knock high is a human content production Thanks for watching the episode. You can find more on that playlist over there. If you prefer to listen or you just had your eyes dilated, you can binge full episodes wherever you get your podcasts or join the party over on Patreon where you get early access episodes, hang out with us, get lots of exclusive bonus content. Hope you subscribe, leave a comment below. Let us know what you think.